Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it's the Board Game Roamer, and I have returned with our next playthrough in the campaign for uh, the Wonder Story, The Cult of Barnacle Bay. That's right, I did this uh, a while back, and it's been a little bit since I did it, but I have been working on some things, which I'll explain as we start our new scenario. So, a couple things going on. Number one... We finished the first scenario in the campaign book. I'll show this as a reminder called Welcome to Barnacle Bay. All right. And we uh, finished that. I put a thing out and asked um, you guys if, uh, like, what you wanted in the um, consensus, which was. A very small group of people, I think one, said that they wanted to do go to the room that was the chanting room, which is yoink right here. So that is what we're doing. Uh, we have all of our heroes from the previous campaign. We're not switching any out. Just to show you, remind you, there's Bebo. Let's take a little trip. There's Eileen. Our boy Gunbjorn, and of course, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, not really, he, he could be though, Tank, right? So that's where we're at with our peoples, with our heroes, okay? Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on rules and such, because we did that in the previous series, so if you want to check that out, you can. Hopefully I will not mess uh, too many of the rules up. I've got a few clarifications in the first playthrough, which was great. I do appreciate that. Uh, I've set everybody up, so just so you know how the scenarios work. Okay, let's talk about that for just a momento, por favor. Um, when you go from um, one scenario uh, to another scenario, uh, your XP resets, you keep essentially... The long story short is, essentially, you keep all of your gear, and you get rid of any tokens, uh, and that includes, you, you know, you basically heal up. You reset your XP to zero, and you restart that way. Now, you do have the option, like I said, to switch out your weapons. I was okay with the weapons that I had, so we're going to keep those. Uh, I've set up the board already. I've populated the board, and you'll notice, hopefully... That So one of the reasons that I would have not done this in a while, and I wanted to get much further than this, but it took me way longer than I thought, so I didn't, was that I am attempting to paint this whole set of enemies. Uh, I did manage to paint the otter. Um, that's what I call them. I did manage to paint the grunt. Um, there were five of those. Gosh, where did I just pick him up from? I think I picked him up from here. And then there were five of these alternate sculpts. Um, so I managed to paint those. I know they're shimmery. I like that. Uh, so that's that's the deal with that. Uh, I was hoping to get more of them done. I'm going to do the bats next. So hopefully by the time we finish this campaign... You will see, I don't know that I'll get to the heroes, but you'll hopefully see all the enemies at some point painted, and it's going to be amazing. Um, don't know how great the job will be for painting, but that's what I'm going to attempt to do. Also, as a suggestion, well, I haven't looked at this, hopefully this will show up well. Yeah, shows up okay. Uh, from a viewer in the last uh, video was that uh, instead of using the um, tokens for health to put down here uh, that I use a d6 this is my d6 it's kind of hard to see over here I have to change my lighting around a little bit uh, but I'm gonna try this if not I'll get some like actual d6 to show up better but these are it's hard to tell, probably. These are hand-carved hand -carved skulls in these dice, so I thought that would be pretty cool for wounds. But, anywho, 
that's the setup. Uh, so I've already shuffled, and you can't see it well. And unfortunately, just because of the nature of how this board is laid out, last time I was able to um, kind of use the um, camera. Yeah, let's do it like this. Camera a lot better to do this, but I do have the round tracker. I have to put one more marker on it, but there's the order, and I'm just gonna basically I'm just gonna have to tell you what the order is uh, for those heroes because I don't have a good place to show it. Um, but yeah, I've already got the board set up. For the first scenario, I'll read you the book in a second. I've already populated it. Um, and I guess I can't really think of anything else. Um, I think that's going to be, um, yeah, I think we're good to go to get started. But let me read from the book, okay? So, uh... Remember that we chose to go towards the chanting, if you remember at the end of the last one. Uh, the wanderers followed the sound of ominous unified chanting and found themselves in a room filled with mutated townsfolk. In the center, with Elder Bane's cultist cir circle around them, there were three beautiful shimmering conch shells. Both the shells were swirling portals. The more and more minions of Elder Bane as... Uh, oh my gosh, I can't read. Uh, that more and more minions of Elder Bane poured through. The wanderers had seen this before. Magical items used to form a mystical shield to protect the town were now tainted. Ruh -ruh raggy. The innate magical properties inverted to bring the things they were once used to ward off. Before the wonders could act, a cultist spotted them, and with a quick chant, the mystic brought tremendous stones tumbling down, dividing the once large room and sailing off the three conch shells. The wonders readied their weapons. They would have to fight their way through this room to make it to the surface and find another way into the chamber with the three shells. Wrestling control of the shells from the cultists was the only way to close the portals and return the protective shield to Barnacle Bay. Uh, objective, shut off all the summoning portals in Encounter 3 and defeat all the enemies. So we're going to start, obviously, in Encounter 1. Uh, when we reach Encounter 3, uh, each we get grunt summoning portals. Essentially, what happens in Encounter 3 is that um, everything just summons the grunts and not the normal summon. Uh, heroes must get all three objective tokens and bring them to the start. Right, So basically, we have to get them all to a location. So this is how we started out. We have a treasure chest up here in the corner. We've got um, a number of enemies scattered about. We have, this is where we get to, uh, actually I guess this was, should technically be a ladder token. But we have to get to that to flip everything up. Um, we've got a grunt and a caster. Uh, in that spot, we've got a grunt a archer and a brute in this spot, a brute here. That's there because that's actually part of the setup. We all start here. Over here we've got two grunts and one of our new high tide additions, uh, a boomer. This is a level one scenario. Okay. Uh, so we're still using the standard deck. As far as I can tell, I don't see anything that told me to change that. So, order of operations. The Brutes go first. Then the Archers, Gunbjorn, the Grunts, Tank, Eileen, Boomer, Bebo, and a Caster. Now, I know you can't see that, unfortunately. Like I said, the way this was set up, um, because of the oddities in the map and the limited space I have to be able to put everything out and be able to reach it and see it with the camera. I couldn't get everything in, but at any rate, what to do, what to do. We're going to start from the top. So brutes go first. Well, there is no brute that can see us. Nothing is engaged. We're hidden. Archers, same way. So Gunbjorn starts first. The Gunbjorn does have, uh, he's in the third position, which means... He has some movement. Uh, he gets a movement uh, modifier uh, of plus one. And the weapons and such are the same as we had when we ended the last um, video. But 
Um, I will say, um, that, uh, he took this time instead of taking the Ursine Strength, which let him hold basically two handed weapon in one hand, he opted to take, um, the other Fortitude, which gives him an additional defense, so he has three defense and additional HP, which means he has six HP. So, that's uh, hopefully will help him because uh, we didn't really use that Ursine strength in the last one, so I wasn't 100% sure that was really, you know, quote, quote, necessary uh, really this time around. So, what's he going to do? That is a good question. All right, so I think what we're going to do with him, like the movement is nice, but the movement doesn't really help us because remember with water spaces, and we can't go here, as soon as we move into this, it immediately ends our move action. So we basically have to burn an action to get through each one of those spaces. So I'm not getting any benefit from the movement. So what I'm going to opt to do instead is I'm going to um, take my whole turn and he is not engaged. Um... All right, so I just wanted to double check something right quick. So if they're engaged, if they're not, they don't have to be engaged to step up. They just, if they're, they can't be engaged to fall back. But he wants to step up. So what we're going to do is Gunbjorn is actually going to move to the top of the initiative stack, which is going to push everybody down, uh, which means now he gets the defensive bonus. Then, um... That's really, I mean, I, I want to step out, but I, don't, I wouldn't have any attacks, right? So I guess I could, I mean, I suppose I could step out. Maybe I'll do that. One action, or was that his entire turn? Hold on a second. If I step out, is that going to be worth it? I mean, it'll get him moving towards me, I guess. Oh. Ah, shoot. I can't do that. Never mind. I can't do that. I lied to you. I have to be engaged, so I can't just change the order. Eh, I guess that makes sense. Alright, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go one. That's his whole entire move action. And he's going to stop there. Uh, I mean, now he's engaged. But... Um, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So, I guess we'll stop there. And, um, a little marker for myself over here. Cool. Uh, so then we'll go to the next turn, which is the grunts. Well, now we do have grunts that can see. So on the enemy turn, if you remember, they're going to um, move and then attack if they can. Um, so we've got two grunts, which are these two here. They're going to move up. And remember, they aren't hindered by water, but in this case, it doesn't matter. And they're going to attack. Now, his defense dice, remember, because he took fortitude, he gets plus one defense. So he's actually going to end up rolling three defense dice. All right, I had to get me a dice tray. So he's got three defense. He's getting attacked by the grunts, which at level one have one attack. So, and that's going to happen twice. So first is a defense, so we're good there. Second attack from the other grunt is a crit. I can just go ahead and roll it. But a crit is a success, so he was able to block both of their attacks. Lovely. All right, Tank. Tank is moving in. He's right here. He's going to move one with his first action. He does have two actions at the start. 
He has opted for the vicious counter. So defense crit causes uh, one wound to close attacking enemy per crit. That's the same thing he had last time. So he is going to make an attack. That is a three dice attack against one, whoa, against one of the grunts. Throwing stuff all over the place. All he's got is his hammer and shield. And wow, okay, there's two hits. Uh, they do have a defense of one. So he takes one out. Boom. We'll take uh, that one out. And that is his turn. So let's go down to his mat and uh, give him some XP. So again, just like last time, um, I'm going to do their XP using these dice, percentile dice. Uh, I'm going to put it right here in their heart since I'm using a D6, that D6 to do that. So they're worth one XP, so that is one XP. I know it's on this 10-sider. There it is. So there is his XP. He has one XP. So cool. Very good. Very nice. Takes one out. I like it. And back to the board. He will put these over here for now. Uh, so next up is Eileen. Eileen, I left the same thing she had last time. The thing about Eileen is that Eileen, the assassin, has flight. Okay? So what flight says is we can move freely through water spaces. They don't count that penalty. So if we have a movement of two uh, or three, right, then we can do that without having to worry about having to stop in those spaces because that's what flight does. Um, so, there, there's a bit of water. Uh, in this case, it's not going to help her much. She's just going to go one and uh, use the second action to attack using Eileen's rippers. That's four dice. That's four dice against this other grunt. So, rolling. That's three hits. Again, they have one defense, which means two hits land, which means that this grunt is taken out. So, now let's go to Eileen's board and get that XP. So, here's Eileen's board. And, um,. I'm going to give her 1 XP, All right? So there we go, and you can see she's got her rippers. Uh, took flight up here at the top. Well, you spare see it. I'm using the same guys to mark that as I did last time. Set that off to the side. That's how I make sure I get in the right amount of XP. And uh, we go whoop, back to the table. All right, next up is Boomer. Now, the Boomer is going to get to go, okay, because it does have, it is considered engaged. It's got line of sight there. Um, this Boomer is an add-on uh, character enemy from the High Tide expansion. So uh, if you didn't see him, then uh, that's that's why um, the boomer. Uh, the problem with the boomer is that when they defeat uh, and 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 die, any close enemies, so our heroes get poisoned, which is not good. Um, uh, So, you know, basically, I almost need to retreat back in here, but that's the only way to get it to move uh, back in here to get it to come around the corner. Oh, that's going to be a problem. Ooh. Yeah, that's going to be a problem. I guess everybody's getting poisoned. Dang. I don't, know, I don't know how to fix that. Uh, okay. 
I guess I should have just not done anything and targeted it from a distance. Yeah. Tactical error. So it goes. It uh, gets a defensive buff. Uh, the grunts, by the way. Oh, wait. The, oh, shoot. I've already messed up. I always forget to apply that. Well, one of these grunts is here, actually. Which means that, uh, who was the first one to get XP? Tank didn't do enough hits. Yeah, he did too. No, he didn't do enough. So Tank actually didn't kill the first one. Let's go ahead and fix that. Um, so the boomer's going to move there. And it is going to attack. And the boomer does, for its default, attack. Uh, looking on the stat sheet, one. Now, it has zero defense, so as long as you hit it, it blows up. But it does that poison, which is no bueno. Um, so it's going to attack the closest hero. Well, there's three there. <laughs> and so that means that we've got a tie. Um... And in the event of a tie, there is a tie breaker. There's an order. Uh, and I believe it is whoever's uh, closest at the top of the initiative track. If I remember, let me look that up right quick just to verify because it's been a while. Okay, I was right. So it's based on initiative. So Gunbjorn is at the top of the initiative track of all the heroes. It's whoever has the highest initiative. Uh, so that is who will be defending. That is uh, th one damage uh, that he's got to defend from the boomer. Uh, so he's going to roll three defense dice. Or three dice. And he gets a one reroll because of his lucky gem. Let me show you this. So he failed that. But this Lucky Gem gives him a reroll. That's a, an accessory he has on all attack, defense, and knowledge checks. So um, he's going to reroll one of these. Still haven't failed. Hopefully this will be a shield. Oh, no. Okay. So he is going to take one damage. So let's go to his mat. And uh, do some damage, unfortunately. So here's Gumbjorn's mat, and we're going to take our gold dice and put it right there. One showing, so he takes one damage. Not the end of the world, remember, he does have six, so that's plus, but you know, who, who really. Likes damage. Nobody. Uh, huh, Bebo goes next. What does Bebo want to do? I really don't want damage. Uh, poison, I mean. So, I hesitate to move her in. But I don't know what else to do with her. It's just going to be a wasted, uh, wasted turn. She has an extra dice, which is great. But again, I don't want to... I think she's just going to sit there, honestly. Then the casters would go next. I don't know what else to do with her. Uh, the casters would go next. And they no casters can see uh, anybody. So, we go back to the top here. Uh, Brutes attack. Again, they'll attack Gun Bjorn because he's at the top of the initiative. Boom. He defends. Uh, oh, wait. Hold on. Uh, yeah. Yeah. These still can't see, so they're not engaged. Uh, so that's the Brutes. Then we'll go to the Archers. There are no Archers that are engaged. Then Gun Bjorn. So now this is where we got to decide. Do we want to do the attack and potentially get poisoned or not? 
Because um, here's the thing with poison. This is on the back of the rule, rule book, okay? Uh, place a poison token on the hero's initiative card. Until the hero rolls an axe shield symbol on a defense check at the end of their turn, they suffer one wound per turn. If they roll a crit, they remove the poison token. <sighs> That's... Basically, you have to defend against it at the end of your turn unless you crit and then it goes away. But I really... Mm. All right. Here's what I think we're gonna do. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna how many uh, tanks got five HP? Um, uh, Gunborn. See, the problem is Gunborn's the one to take it, but I don't want to give everybody else anything. So, two actions Gunborn has. First action, Gunborn is going to. Uh, attack the grunt. He is in the uh, normal uh, movement position, so he doesn't get any extra dice. But he will get four for a standard attack. So there's two hits um, and a crit, which means he gets to roll another die. Oh gosh, and another crit. He gets to roll another die and a miss. So that's what he's got. He will re-roll one of those misses just to see. It's still a miss. So that's three hits. The grunt only defends one, so the grunt's taken out. Cool. Then his second action is going to be to move back here. And that way, uh, that way he can just have tank. Oh, man, that sucks. Just have tank, uh, well... Doing what tank do, and uh, hopefully tanking, tanking, and taking that poison. So now Gunborn gets an XP for taking out the grunt. So he is on his way to unlocking his potential, as they say. Uh, Grunts go. Now there are no grunts engaged. Then tank goes. Um, mm. Yeah, if, if if tank does this, though, Eileen's going to take poison, too. Ugh. Ugh. Man, this is, this is, this is bad news, bears. Um... Shoot. I don't know. Let's uh, let's do it. Maybe we can get lucky. Maybe we'll get lucky. This could be bad. Maybe we'll get lucky, though. Uh, okay, so... What happens... Tank is going to use his first action to do an attack. It's a three dice attack. Tank is in the attack position on the initiative track, so he actually gets four dice. He gets two hits. Doesn't have your or anything. That is enough to hit the boomer. So that is going to give him an XP on his pile. However, remember, we now have the poison to deal with. Yay. What are we going to do with poison? So we'll go over here. It's going to be Eileen and he that gets the poison tokens. All right, so we're going to put uh, a poison token. Let's put it right there for now as a reminder for him. We're going to give him the one XP for that uh, boomer because they are one XP. XP, there we go. Uh, and then we also have to do the same thing with Eileen, so I'm putting that on Eileen. Now, if you remember when we read that, Poison said, uh, until a hero rolls an axe shield symbol on a defense check at the end of their turn. Wait a minute. Until a hero that a hero who rolls an axe symbol in a defense check. 
Ah. Wait. Okay. So the way that I'm interpreting that uh, is they would have to roll, oh no, they have to roll defense check and roll, uh, they don't take any damage if they roll the shield. Um, okay, there's two ways to, there's two ways to interpret that. I'm going to interpret this, and I will post this online, and I may interpret this wrong, but I'm going to interpret the way that that reads as, at the end of the turn, they make a defense check. Because that's, I mean, that it says at the, until they make a roll that symbol on a, uh, a defense check at the end of their turn, I don't, there's two ways to interpret that. I'm going to assume that you get a chance to basically every turn, because otherwise... If that was not the case, then, like, if these were the last enemies and there was nothing to hear, you'd have to run all the way over. I just don't see that. That doesn't make sense. Um, yeah, that doesn't make sense at all. So I'm going to assume that that's what it means. So he's got three defense. We're rolling it. So we don't have any crits, but we do have a shield, so that means that we don't take the damage, but we don't get rid of the poison either. That's how I interpret that. Next we go to Eileen. Uh, Eileen is going to, uh, is in the movement position, which actually kind of works out for her because she could go one Two, that's two movement points, one action. Because remember with flight, she says she moves through water spaces normally. Then, uh, three. Okay, so what is this going to be? Had to happen at some point. What do we got? Okay, so that's a normal event. That is not a trap. That's, that's good. Normal event, so we're going to go over here and we're going to pull a card. All right, so what do we get? Um, cult storage. You discovered a cult storage room. Add one health potion to your inventory. Ooh, <laughs> you're very nice. She may need that based on, uh, you know, this whole uh, poison thing. That's good. So our party size, we did not start with any health potions based on our party size. But I'm going to put one in her inventory now. Uh, all right, so she's got one in her inventory. Good deal. That will help with the poison later, hopefully. If she can't get rid of it soon. Hopefully, if we're lucky, she'll get rid of it soon and we don't have to worry about it. But in the event that we don't, now we at least have something to... Let's deal with that. All right. And it says check knowledge. Now, her knowledge, oh, wow, her knowledge is actually three. Okay? So this is this is good. On a zero to two, well, all right, this is just not good. Zero to two, if I screw up, two casters show up. We don't want to do that. If I roll all successes, which we really want to do, we don't have any way to re-roll this, so we really want to do that. Uh, we get to draw a treasure card. So I'm really, really hoping for three successes. Alright, here we go. Watch out. Oh, man. Two successes. And no re-rolls. So, wah, wah, wah. Casters. Ugh. Uh, gross. Two casters appear in the space. Lovely! Just what we needed. Uh, and this gets discarded. Bye bye event card. Okay. Well, there you go. They already have an initiative card, so we don't have to do anything with that. Uh, the boomer goes away.
and I can't, I'd have to go back and look. I asked a question about when that actually happens because that might make a difference. I think it happens immediately, so that should have already been gone. Um, Bebo's next in the defensive slot. So, one, two. That's really all she can do, unfortunately. Uh, she took explosive crit on spell attack, causes one AOE wound. Uh, and, gosh, then the casters go, and they have one additional attack. Ah, uh, uh, that sucks. Okay, so that means that they're doing a two ranged attack versus Eileen. Oh, my God, that's horrible. God, that sucks. Okay. And Eileen has two defense. That's it. And there's two of these attacks. First attack. Oh, wait. You know what? I did not, at the end of Eileen's turn, roll the defense for the poison. So let me just go ahead and do that now. So, blocked it. Doesn't get rid of it. Now we roll the defense versus the bats. So first bat. Oh, yes. There is no sort of counter or anything. We'll just see what would happen. So that's actually two successes, so it blocks all the damage from that one. Second bat. Uh, 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 uh. She takes a lot of thing. Big time. No bueno. Alright. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Oh, yes, you can do that. Yes, you can do that. You're going to have to do that. You're going to have to take that damage, Eileen. Why would you say such a thing? Let's let's go ahead and go to her sheet. Check out Eileen, 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 Eileen. Yeah. Anyway, so taking two damage. Our skull dice. Ugh. Two damage. Right there. Man. No. No good. And that is the end of that, and I'm going to make that the end of this particular video. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for subscribing, being part of the channel. I'm excited to get back into this. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, the previous playthrough. If you have not seen it, go watch it. You can be introduced to our characters and see how we did in that. Hopefully this playthrough will be just as exciting. Uh, I'm excited to do the campaign through this. So, uh... Yeah, if you guys saw anything I missed, if you have any tactical suggestions, comments, whatever, leave them in the comment section below. I will respond to you. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for subscribing. Again, I'm the Board Game Roamer. Thanks for hanging out at my table, folks. And I will see you, ladies and gentlemen, in the next video. Bye, guys.